crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to cut out stamped images using the Brothers Scan and Cut. The stamp set we'll be using is called Hey Love. It's one of our new cling stamp sets by Stampin' Up. It's in our occasions catalog. Here's what the whole front of the stamp set looks like. Okay, so prior to this tutorial, I've already stamped the little ape, and now I'm just going to show you a little trick to getting him to stick onto the mat. And that little trick is to use painter's tape, which is right here. So I'm just gonna take, that's only because my mat is not very sticky. It might, it might sound like it's sticky, but it's really not gonna hold that whisper white cardstock on there very well. So you don't wanna, you wanna make sure your tape is on there good because if it gets stuck in your machine, you know, you have a heck of a time getting that. But I just put a couple little pieces of tape to hold my stamped image in place. If your mat, that's only if your mat is not sticky. Next thing you're gonna do, when you turn on your machine, you're gonna, you're gonna see pattern and scan. We're gonna select scan, then we're gonna select direct cut. We're gonna directly cut out this, this ape. Okay, so we're gonna go to the machine, store it on the machine, and we're gonna use black and white recognition mode. Don't worry if I'm going a little fast right now because I will reinforce this in the next part of the tutorial when we review and do some more advanced techniques. Okay, you wanna load the mat. So one hand should be on the mat like this and the other, you're just pressing this button, the load mat button. So good, now we're gonna just say start and we're gonna scan. It's gonna go ahead and scan the whole 12 by 12 mat. Okay, so it doesn't take very long and it should recognize our little ape. Okay, let's say okay. And it did a good job, there's our ape. And it also got all these stray bits. Okay, we can get rid of the stray bits by going in here and saying ignore object size, but there's an easier way. We can, we can just ignore anything up to an inch, for, for example. And that'll get rid of a lot of straight bits, but an easier way is just to select the area that you want to scan. That'll get rid of a lot of straight bits as well. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I want to put an outline distance around my ape. And as in all my tutorials, I will show you what this looks like, you know, in the finished product as well. Okay, so let's say outline distance of 0 0.04. Okay, and we're gonna say okay. It looks like it got all the stray bits. There's an outline distance of 0 0.04. So now we can go ahead and cut out our ape. Now when I'm using Whisper White cardstock, I like to use a blade depth of five. Let me focus that. I'm using a standard blade and a blade depth of five. That is for Stampin' Up's Whisper White cardstock. Okay, and I'll, t I'll tell you about the ink as I show you how I use that. All right, so now let's go ahead and press that cut button. And it's, it's not gonna take very long to cut. And if you stick around to the, uh, till the end of this entire tutorial, you will see lots of examples of things I made using this set, okay? So it, it easily cut. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to say okay and unload the mat, okay? And we're gonna say okay again. Now, pull this forward and you can see that there's my stamped image. To get the stamped image off your mat, you can do a couple things. First of all, it's not very sticky, so it's probably just gonna fall right off. Okay, I'm go I went down to get my spatula. Okay, so here's, or you could just bend the mat and it should come right off. Or you can use your little spatula if you have a lot of smaller things to get those images off the mat. It's just very, very simple. Okay, let me put that onto black cardstock so you can just see how cute the little ape is. And later I'll be showing you how some, some of the ones that I colored as well. Okay, so that was an outline distance of 0 0.04. And so now we can go ahead and remove that tape off the mat. I try not to use the tape too many times because um, I don't want it to, to get to, to not be sticky and then like fall off in the machine. So you don't want painter's tape in your machine. I just crumble it up, throw it away, and we'll use more painter's tape later. All right, so. You might be saying, boy, that was easy. And it sure was easy, okay? So there we, we've just done our ape and it was very easy. 
Now, what if you have, you know, something like this? You have a little skunk and you have, you know, little little hearts that and you wanna and you wanna scan around the whole thing. Without any of my trickery that I'm gonna show you, what it would do is it would just recognize the black line, because that's what the scan and cut does, and it would get this first little heart probably. And it would go around the skunk. But what if we want all those cute little hearts? Okay? So there's a trick to that. Now I've already done the stamping part. So here's our Here's the stamped image. Again, I've used Memento Black. I'll show you how I actually get a stamped image as well. We'll do that next one. Okay, so the little trick is going to be to take a pencil. Okay, so you have a pencil and you just take a pencil and you and you connect the hearts. So if this if this skunk becomes one big image, then it will scan around the whole thing. Now you could connect the hearts this way, but then it's gonna make a big outline distance all around. If I connect the hearts here, it's gonna make a big white spot. So I wanna connect the hearts here. Okay, and here. I'm kind of connecting them in the middle because when I put that outline distance, I kind of want it to draw a draw around the skunk. Okay, I'm gonna do that again here because sometimes my my marks are not very dark and also just to reinforce what I'm doing. So whenever you want the scan and cut to scan, you just use a pencil. And that way you can erase it later, okay? I'm sorry, I wanted that one. You can erase it now. I actually have a special eraser for that, but that's okay, you'll get to see the difference. Really, I wanted to connect it right there, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, reshoot this video because this is real life crafting, okay? So that one will just be a little bit different and you'll see why. It depends on where I put the pencil mark. Actually, it's a good learning, learning tool. All right, so here we are with our skunk. Let's do the skunk next. Then we will do something else. We'll do another stamped image, which will mount, and then we'll do the otter last because the otter is the trickiest of all. All right, so I'm putting the skunk, I'm just putting it onto my mat, see? It doesn't really matter where you put things on your mat, but I don't like to use the corners very much because I don't have as much success with the corners as I do sort of in the middle of my mat. And you just have to get to know your machine. like. Like sometimes these are not my best scanning areas, they're just up in the very corner. So I just move things down a little bit. And every machine is different. This is my second machine. This is, by the way, the CM350 or Scan and Cut 2. And what I'm doing now is just putting painter's tape onto my little image because the last thing I need to do, I don't want it to do, is slip. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing we just did before. We're going to go home to the home screen. And we're gonna say delete, yes. Now I'll go a little bit slower. I told you we'd be doing this again. So when you see pattern and scan when you turn on your machine, pattern is when you're gonna be cutting out the patterns that are built into the machine. But we wanna use scan because we're gonna scan the stamped image. We're not gonna save this image, that's why we're using the direct cut instead of the scan to cut data, direct cut. This is a temporary storage area. You either store it on your machine or in the Canvas workspace. It doesn't matter because it's not really going to be there when you're done. You're just storing it. So let's just say our machine. Our machine has enough memory to store it, so that's where I always store it. Okay, we're going to use black and white recognition mode again because we have good contrast between the foreground and the background. Okay, so we're using black and white recognition mode, and we are going to go ahead and load the mat. And then we can scan the image. We're going to say start. And we're going to scan the cute little skunk with the stinking sweet, <laughs> the stinking sweet sentiment, which I just think is awesome. Okay, let's see how it did. Recognizing. Okay, we're going to say okay. And there are our two skunk. Okay, let's let's zoom in. And I mean not zoom in, we're just gonna select the area. And then I'll zoom in in a minute. But first we want to select the area. Okay. Now I can go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can actually see that. It did a really good job on these. And I haven't even put the outline distance around them yet. But see, it did a good job selecting them. Okay, we can zoom back out. Oh actually I zoomed back in, I didn't mean that. Okay, so there we are, we're back to our regular view and make sure we're still in focus. 
and we want to put an outline distance of 0 0.04. Let's say OK, let's say OK again. All right, great, no straight bits. There's no straight bits for us to delete. We can just go ahead and cut it. And remember from the last time that we're using Whisper White card stock, so we're using a blade depth of five, okay? And that, and when that blade depth, you have a little bit of the blade sticking out the bottom. All right, so go ahead and we're gonna say start, and we're gonna cut out the two skunk. And like I said, I have a special eraser. I do not use just the regular end of an eraser, end of a pencil eraser, because if I do, it leaves pink marks all over the place. Okay, let's just say okay, and let's unload our mat. Awesome, okay? So again, we to get this off, we bend the mat, we take the skunk off, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two because where we put the marks. So, okay, let's just put that over here and put this on black cardstock. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna put that one first and then this one. Okay, focus. Now, you see, there's where I put the, I connected the two hearts right here. And I like this a lot better because that way the line went up and around the hearts, okay? So that's good, that's what I want. And this one's still good, I like this one too. Okay, so now we have, they're both cute, but you can see how the difference is where I put the line is where the, the scan line was recognized and then it cut around it. Okay, both cute, and I will show you projects I've done with these after I erased it later in this tutorial. Okay, so now we have, we have done, we have done a very simple image. We've done the ape. Then we did this image where you have to draw around it. And now we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to cut out this alligator. Okay, let's just go back with the machine and I'm gonna put down, I'm just gonna use my catalog because I don't wanna get any ink on my table. So we have a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Okay. In fact, let me just, I can actually turn my camera down like this because I don't want you to uh, have a different angle. All right, we're going to, I'm going to show you the, our new cling stamps and how you mount them. So we have, I've already mostly mounted most of these already. So they're really strong. I mean, they're really, you can actually put the sentiments on them now. And that's, I store them just by sticking them to the case. But they are so strong that I need my little tool. Uh, I think it's called pick me up buddy or something or pick me up tool what's it say I forget but this is a new tool I have and it's pretty cool I'll put it in the description later so this tool is kind of like what I've been using to get these off out of the case because they're so they're so sticky that that's how I have to scrape them off with this little spatula side all right so we take the rubber I'm actually I'm going to save this little piece you know just just for like storing them in later but I'm going to take the alligator, the rubber stamp, okay, out of its little mold. So here it is. And now I'm going to take the backing, okay, take the backing off. And this part, let me, let me get rid of this little tool. Okay, now we're going to take this off. And now, normally you can just, you can just mount these right onto your, you know, your stamping block, and that's fine, and that will work. But they don't stick very well. So if you use the sticker, these cling stamps will work better. So what I do is I just, I'm going to take the, the sticker and I'm going to peel it off. I'm not going to peel the whole sticker off. I'm only peeling, the sticker is double sided. So I'm going to go like that. This is just my little trick that I figured out kind of just because I'm new to cling stamps. I was like, hmm, how, did, how do you mount these? Of course, I could read the instructions, of course, inside the case, but no. The paper chef does not read instructions, she just figures things out. All right, so here, and that's why I'm showing you on a video because I think it's easier. So I, I get the sticker like that, and then I take my cling stamp, and I just put it right on top of the sticker. And that seemed to work for me to get the sticker in the right place. Because when I tried to take the sticker off and then put it on the cling stamp, it just never went in exactly the right place. Okay, I'm pressing down. Okay, and there, now I have this really super sticky cling stamp. 
and now I have the image. Okay, so now I'm taking my, my stamping block. This is just out of one of my kits, a stamping block, and I'm going to stick the stamp onto it. And it clings, and there it is. And what I like about this is, because I have a craft club and the students use my stamps, I've never had these stickers on them before because they wouldn't, when I used to put the stickers on, the old, the old stamps wouldn't stick. So now I'm so happy to be able to put the stickers on so the students see what they're actually stamping. Anyway, so here we're gonna do this now. We're gonna take this cute little alligator, we're gonna ink it up, we're gonna stamp it onto Whisper White cardstock, we're gonna scan it, we're gonna cut it, and everything. And it's, So you're gonna to see start to finish. Okay, so I use Memento Black ink. The reason I use this ink, not only because it's really good ink and it has, you know, good coverage, but I use Memento Black ink because I'm gonna use the Stamping Blends markers later to color my images and the Stampin' Blends don't run, they're alcohol markers and they don't run when you put them in the ink. I mean, when you when you use this kind of ink. Okay, so what I'm doing is I tapped a couple times, the reason I did, just to make sure I get even coverage. And I do see an even coverage here. I even look for that little shine. The shine shows that the black got everywhere. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and stamp my piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I always hold it there for a couple seconds and I even press with my finger, one finger, and there's my stamped image. Okay, it looks pretty good. And the first time you, when you stamp, it's kind of light. In fact, let's just do that again just to show you what I mean. The first time you ever ink a stamp, it has to, there's a lot of rubber here and it's, and it's like absorbing all the ink and once it kind of gets into the little pores, the next stamp will be darker. So I'll just show you what I mean. And then after that, they stay dark the whole time. So let's just, there, I press down for a couple seconds. There, see what I mean? That's a better image because it's my second image. It doesn't really, you can't really tell the difference, but either way, we have two to stick in. And then we can clean this with our Stampin' Scrub or baby wipes or, you know, just clean your stamp. And otherwise it might get all over your shirt or get ink all over yourself. So here we are, we have this, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our mat. I'm gonna take that painter's tape off. Remember I said, it's probably best you don't really use it again because see, there's paper, there's fibers on it. And if your mat's not sticky and you're using painter's tape, you probably got some lint on your painter's tape. So I just get rid of that and I'll use more painter's tape. So here we are, we're gonna stick our, our alligator down, how cute is he? We're gonna get our painter's tape, put a little piece there. You can even use your little brayer. See, there we go. You know, just, it just rolls, helps. Oh, but that's smeared. Problem is it smears the image. So let's not use that image. Don't use your brayer, and I'm not used to uh, having a wet image, see? I just smeared it with my brayer. So don't do that. Let's just use, instead, use the one, the first one I stamped, because that is not smeared. I'm not gonna use my brayer unless your image is really dry. So there we are. We have mounted our image onto the mat. We're gonna go ahead and pull the machine closer, and now I will tilt my camera back so you can see that. And I will focus. So here we are, Back, go back home, and go back to scan, direct cut, machine, black and white recognition mode, and go ahead and load your mat. Go ahead and scan the image. And we can also tidy up our table as all this is going on. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna see how that did. It looked like looks pretty good. We're gonna say okay. And it scan the alligator, it also got some extra bits, so we're just gonna zoom on in. Zoom on in. And let's put the outline distance of 0 0.04. We're gonna say okay. I'm gonna leave those little straight bits there, just so you can see how I would go about removing them. So there. We, we put the outline distance, but we have two straight bits. When you go into here, this is the editing mode. It has little shapes. And if you go in there, you can trash the parts you don't want. Don't trash the actual stamped image. You just want to trash, select these little bits and put them in the trash. So when I say trash, I mean literally throw away or delete. You're selecting them, they turn red, and you're deleting them, okay? If you're not sure which one or how to select them, you can just go use these arrows. Like it'll toggle between 
all the images on your screen and you can kind of select the ones you want, delete the ones you want. Sometimes you have a lot of stray bits. Depends on how dirty your mat is. All right, let's go ahead and cut that image. And we're gonna say start. This is a pretty fast process. I'm showing you step by step, but really I did cut loads of these today. I mean, really they were so easy to cut. Not this one, because I just mounted this one, but I'm talking about uh, loads of apes and loads of otters and loads of skunk. Okay, but this one I just mounted, you saw me mount it, so I didn't, this is the first time I'm cutting this one. Okay, so let's unload the mat, say okay. And here we have our super cute little alligator ready for a Valentine. So here's what we've done so far. We have cut the ape, we have cut the alligator. Okay, we have cut the skunk and we didn't erase the hearts yet, okay? So next that we're gonna do is the otter. Next and last, okay? Now I've already, I've already done some things which I've already like, you know, I've already stamped the otter just to save time because what I wanna show you now is, the, is a scanning technique. So here's the idea. Now this otter is super cute. I'm gonna show you projects I made like leaving these cute little lines on it and I wanna show you how cute they come out without the little lines on them. Okay, the little lines, the artist, you know, meant for this to, to look like, you know, the otter is swimming and he's upside down and you're looking down into the water and that's awesome. You could color these blue and the otter would be in the water and you could color the background and it's awesome. But in my case, I'm trying to put these into in little treats and I think it's better without the lines for sometimes. So we'll show you how to get rid of those lines. So, but I don't wanna get rid of this little heart. So on the, on the case, you will see that the heart, the little cloud is separated. Okay, so if you try to scan this image, let me focus. If you scan this, it will scan this little heart separately. And we don't want that. So I put a little line with a pencil right there. I connected this to this because I do want it. I would want the otter and the heart. Okay, so let's just show you what I did. I just took the pencil and I went like that. I've already done it, but I'm just doing it again for your sake. Okay, so, so you can see. So I have pencil marks. So we want to cut out the otter without the little water marks, but we still want the heart to be attached. That's my personal preference. Of course, it's your project. You can do what you want, but I mean, this is, that is how I handled it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I used to, by the way, reuse my painter's tape, but you know what? I got stuck in my machine a couple of times and I know some of my viewers have said the same thing. Like one of my viewers was describing an incident where the painter's tape got wrapped all around her metal rod. So that's why I've been just kind of not reusing it lately. Okay, I'm putting the otters onto the mat. And I'm gonna take a big old piece of tape and I'm gonna put that on, on there like that to hold to hold the otters in place. And then while it's scanning, I'll go ahead and stick one at the bottom too. All right, so let's just go ahead and get that part started. We're gonna go ahead and focus. We're going to go home, okay. Scan, direct cut, machine, black and white recognition mode, load the mat. It didn't load right because remember I told you you need to hold your hand on the mat. So now I'm holding my hand on the mat and I'm loading the mat. So there we go. And we're gonna say start. And I say while it's scanning, I'm gonna go ahead and Put another piece of tape on it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because the tape is not going to affect. We're not scanning the tape. <laughs> We're just scanning the little otters. These sea otters are so cute. So it's recognizing. Okay, we're going to say okay. Now, it recognized. Let me zoom in and show you what it did. Well, first let's put the outline distance. I'm going to put an outline distance of 0.04. And then I'm going to show you what it did. We're going to select the area we want. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and show you that it selected all those little lines. Okay, I'm going to move this down a bit. See? All those little lines. We don't, and I'm going to zoom in one more time just so you can see what I mean. We don't want to cut out every little watermark, meaning the little waves. No, we want to get rid of those. Okay? So that's why we're going to close and we're going to go here to ignore object size. Let's get my stylus. This is ignore object size. And the otter is over an inch tall. So if we can say ignore all the things up to about an inch, 
See, you can just watch them disappear. There we go, come on, ignore, ignore, ignore. You can watch them disappear, and then you will have all the stray bits gone, all those watermarks. Say okay, say okay, say okay. There, we are done. We got rid of all that water. Just by saying ignore objects up to one, of, it was about 1.02 inches, okay? So we are still using a blade depth of five, and we're using Whisper White cardstock, and we're gonna go ahead and cut those two otter, otters. I think skunk is plural. Like skunk is the same, like skunk and skunks. I don't know, so, but otters does have the S. So anyway, I'm just trying to be grammatically correct. We'll see. My viewers always correct my grammar, which is fine because I love my viewers. I love my YouTube viewers. Okay, so here we are. We say finish cutting and we're gonna say unload, okay. And here we have it. We have the little otters. Look at that, super awesome cuteness with the little, with the little clouds. Okay, so now I need to take my microphone off because I'm tethered to my tripod right now. I'm grabbing the eraser. I promised I'd show you my eraser. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so here's the eraser I use. It is just, I mean, it's just a Pentel eraser. I'll link to it in the description, but it, what it, it does like, it's white, in other words, it's not an eraser like the end of a pencil eraser. So when I erase these marks out of my brother's scan and cut, I'm just gonna go ahead and, at this point, I'm gonna turn the camera down like this. Okay, so you can see. Here, let's just use my little black piece of cardstock so you can really see. See, th this will not leave like smear marks all over like the, the red eraser would. And it also, what's nice about this kind of eraser, I don't know, I just found it in like a office supply store. It just works. It doesn't make my ink rub off and, oh, there went my other otter. Okay, so we can't erase the other otter. So there's my, yay, for all the stamped images in the set, they're all so cute. We can go ahead and erase the little You, know, you can't even tell they were there, the, the pencil marks. I mean, how awesome is he? Okay, that's our little squirrel. And here's our little ape. So we have one of each. One otter flew off the table, but you know we did cut six things today already. So we, were, we had a very productive tutorial, I would say. And there's the last one erased. Okay, so we put them all there. You get to admire this awesome set of cuts that the brother scan and cut did and imagine fuzzy cutting them and how long that would take you all right as promised and as i always do at the in my tutorials is i show you things that i have created using the set so one of the things i did this week was a stampin up had a little challenge and they said hey everybody they said in our demonstrator site they said hey please show some simple stamping using valentine's cards so I did, I did some simple stamping. And simple stamping just means that you use, like, you use paper and ink. And that's it, and the stamp set, okay? So my simple stamping example was, was just this. I used that stamp set and I showed, hey, just use like lovely lipstick, these cute little note cards, and you can make these cute cards just using simple stamping. And then I took it to the next level. I said to my viewers, you can take it to another level. You can put some layering, it's still simple stamping because you're just using still just ink and paper, but instead you're using a different color of paper using cardstock. And I used a little bit of Wink Stella to put some glitter on it. And it's just layering is all you're doing. You're taking your skills to the next level by layering and adding some dimension to your cards. Okay, one more example I did since then is I just did the same thing, but I just used different colors than when I punched. And then I showed the viewers this example and I made this example by taking it to one more level where you're just using, again, you know, you're just using stamp, ink, and paper, but I use the blends markers. Okay, I colored this, this, these in with the blends, wrong color, okay, crumb cake. There's a couple crumb cakes. There's, there's like a light and a dark crumb cake, and I used that, and I used some lipstick and some Wink Stella. Okay, so this is, these are called um, narrow, narrow note cards. I'll have all of the, materials that I used in the description.
Okay, so I used the Brother Scan and Cut to cut out this little eight. Okay, so now I'll show you another example of this. I think I did some more of those. That was just one plain one. Okay, then I did a card, or this is the front of a card. Okay, so now I thought, well, really apes, you know, maybe some are brown, but I thought they're more like silver, or so I just used what's called smoky slate, and I tried that color, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that better, but I'm still using lovely lipstick, and I colored the ape, and this is the front of a card, and I used some little sequins, and I need to mount this onto, this is, these are in colors, lovely lipstick, pineapple punch, but I don't have like the card base yet. I mean, the, the actual card it's gonna go on yet. But this is this is what you can do with those cute images with the Brother Scan and Cut. All right, so then I was messing with the otter. And I said, oh my gosh, he's so cute. I like in the note card. So I'm gonna put this note card in the envelope, right? And so these are the whisper white narrow note envelopes. And I said, oh, these are super cute. I can just stamp right onto the envelopes and they go with the cards, and so I did a couple. I did, you know, stink and sweet. But then I thought I can just color them. Now I didn't, I didn't color directly onto these because when you use alcohol markers, the color seeps right through, and you would have been able to see it in the inside. So the color does seep right through in the envelope too, but it doesn't really matter. See, it seeps through, but it's an envelope. It doesn't run onto your paper. So I think those are much cuter when they're colored. I think I need to color that little red heart in. Okay, so that's that's an example of that. And then, we, since, we're, since I'm talking about the Brother Scan and Cut here, and I said I'd show you Brother Scan and Cut examples, here's your otter after you cut it out with the Brother Scan and Cut. And then here's what I did with it. I would made a Valentine treat. Let me hold that up here. Let me focus that. So I colored in using the crumb cake and a real red, and I used some paper from the Classic Garage Suite because it matched the real red from this Classic garage or geared up garage I, I already forgot the name of it it's um it's it's it goes along with the skittles i mean it matched the skittles perfectly i'll have a link in the description of all the materials i used but um i just love this little corny saying you you utter be my valentine i love that saying and the little tummy i use so i use crumb cake and then i use this like bronze for the tummy and for the outer heart so i like that and then i did another one of these valentines like this with the stinking sweet. And I used for this, the Brother Scan and Cut again, and I used the you know skunk with the smoky slate, the light and the dark smoky slate, and some little hearts I colored in real red. And finally, what I wanted to tell my viewers is how I made the hearts. All I did was I went and took, so one six by six piece of this paper from the classic garage suite, uh, yielded two toppers for my Skittles bags. And these Skittles bags are two by eight cellophane bags. So I had the Skittles bags, and then I had a little leftover strip. And the strip was only like an inch. So I did, I said I wanted half inch hearts. And I told the brother scan and cut, using pattern, using the patterns that are built into the machine, to cut me a bunch of hearts. And I used those little hearts for these cute little tags for my topper. And I used the everyday label label punch. I just used a one inch strip and then I stamped the sentiment and then I cut out I cut those out with the one you know, with the everyday label punch. Okay, so I hope you like my examples and I hope you like the stamp set. If you'd like to obtain it, please con use the contact form in the description below this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're new here. And until next time, happy Valentine's Day.